Welcome back. In the first part, we took a look at how the methodology that we take to developing algo systems can in itself lead to poor results when we backtest them. This can then potentially lead to you throwing away what was actually a perfectly good system. We drew the analogy with how, in the past, the IT industry itself used to very often suffer similar misfortune with large software development projects when using what was called a waterfall project methodology. However, the IT industry on the whole has changed the way they do things by using what are called agile development methodologies. And this has resulted in much more successful projects and also much more effective applications. Here, the key difference is that an iterative approach is used, where the functionality of the application is split up into much smaller components. Each individual component is developed and then tested before moving on to the next piece of functionality. Only once you're completely happy that the component is working properly do you move on to the next component. And this cycle repeats again and again until all of the functionality is delivered. But it's one very specific aspect of agile methodologies that I think is particularly relevant to algo system development. And it's that that I want to focus my time on now. So let's return to the whiteboard and take a closer look at this now. When comparing the Agile methodology with a traditional approach, you'll notice that they both have the same end goal, the same product. But the process to get there is different. With the Agile methodology, at each stage of the development process, the aim is to have a fully working product. So a very different approach to the one above here. The deliverable at each stage won't meet all of the requirements yet, of course. That won't happen until the end of the project. However, by ensuring the functionality at the end of each stage here is developed in such a way to be fully operational, it means that the users can test that specific part of the functionality right away and give feedback there and then. Then, if there are any changes required, so maybe the product doesn't quite meet the requirement, or maybe there's a bug, then it's relatively easy and quick to identify this and also to change it at this point without the huge amount of rework that was needed in the above approach. So the important point is that you get any issues sorted right away before moving on to the next piece of functionality. Then by the time the project reaches this point, the users have already seen most parts of the application and everyone knows that everything's working as expected and the application does the job that it's supposed to. So the project is on track to be a great success. But what we're interested in is how this kind of methodology can help us as algo traders. So let me start to break this down into functional areas that you can relate to. And remember, at each stage, we want to have a fully working product that can be backtested. So the approach that I take for the first stage when I'm developing any new system is that at stage one, I will develop the open and the close signal. And that's it, nothing else. So no filters, no stop losses, no take profits, no triggers, nothing else. But because I have the ability to both open a trade and to close it, it meets the requirement of being a fully operational trading system. And then I test these pieces of functionality using a simple backtest and using default parameter values. So this isn't an optimization. All I'm interested in right now is whether the signal is working correctly or not. So I use parameter values that make logical sense based on whatever the system premise is. Now developing the system in this way with just the entry and the exit signal initially has a number of huge advantages. So click top right now to go to the final part where we'll look at why this is.